There was a pretty intense and dramatic physical altercation that went down at a recent cro show involving frontman and bassist Harley Flanagan and a bunch of kids running a zine. SA allegations were levied against Harley and a brawl broke out. A little video was captured of this brawl and Harley and the zine both came forward with their sides of the story, okay? But this story is still developing as witnesses come forward with their testimonials. Hey, how's it going? My name is Dan Frampton and today we gotta talk about this because this is definitely going down and a lot of people are losing their mind. A lot of people are getting very, very emotional and rightfully so. Harley Flanagan is one of the most controversial people in punk rock. He always has been. I'm not gonna get into all the dramas of the Harley Flanagan right now. If you know, you know. But yesterday I woke up to this post over here from Harley Flanagan of the Crow Mags, okay? And it says, Anyone who was at the cro show last night and witnessed what happened, please contact us. We have dozens of witnesses and anyone else who got sprayed with mace or saw the incident, please come forth. And I'm like, oh my God, this is very serious. Someone attacked Harley. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of Harley, but I don't want anyone to get hurt. I don't want anyone to get maced. I don't want anyone to get like physically attacked by any means, even like the most enemies of enemies. So as I'm scrolling through his post here, oh, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look so good. Oh no, that doesn't look so good. I'm gonna try my best to read Harley Flanagan's caption, but he has no idea how to use the English language. There's nary a comma to be found here. So I'm gonna do my best to try to decipher this cipher, okay? I'm just glad I got cut and not my son. That could have been my son's neck or face. Everyone who's was maced and assaulted will be pressing charges. Okay, got it. These people contacted us asked for an interview, were put on the guest list. Okay, that doesn't sound very good. That sounds like a coordinated attack. This sounds like these guys don't really have a publication. They don't have a zine. And they're like, hey, we just want to get close and we want to cut this guy. And that's awful. If this really is what happened and if he's painting an accurate story here, this is brutal. This is awful. Someone coordinated an attack to get close to Harley to slice and mace him. That's awful. They showed up in ski masks armed with mace a baton and some kind of stun gun and a suture kit which fell out of their bag with stitches, iodine, and everything one would need to repair a wound. So they obviously came with the intentions of starting something. Okay, there's too many commas in that sentence. <laughs> Talk about a run-on sentence. Okay, so this guy is saying that they showed up with a whole barrage of weapons, mace, a baton, a suture kit. They were ready for a battle. This does not look good. And this was the first thing that I saw, and I was like, oh my god. This sounds awful. Harley's really painting a picture of like, of, of, of terrorism right now. This is brutal. And he wants people to come forward if they saw anything. So right away you're thinking, okay, this guy's asking for witnesses to come forward. He can't be in the wrong, right? And then we keep reading. Anybody who saw anything, please step forward. This incident took place before we even got on stage. And there were children in the room that could have been injured. Okay, well, all of that doesn't sound great. So as the day went on, more information started to come out about what actually happened here. And it looks like it involved this zine over here called Destroy Zine. And by the looks of it, the whole ski mask thing is just like their brand. They didn't just show up in ski masks to assault this guy. These guys show up in ski masks everywhere. They show up in ski masks at a record store to show off their new zine. And speaking of their zine, it didn't look like it was a front to get close for an attack. This looks like this is something that these guys are very, very passionate about. Look at the quality of this work right here. This is not what everybody does to get over their zine, okay? This is like ridiculously good looking stuff over here, okay? So already the story that Harley is painting is already a little bit muddied because he's not really telling the full truth. He's coming out in full victim mode. Look at my cuts, look at my bruises. I'm just so glad my son is okay. And then we go over to the destroy zine part of things. You're like, no, these guys are, are a legitimate zine and not only are they a legitimate zine I don't need to see their faces to click on this image here to be like 
These are children. These are literally children. And anybody to get into a physical altercation with, even if they're not like under the age of 18, but like little dudes like this that are just like selling their hot sauce and their little zines or whatever. I don't know, dude. That's starting to look pretty, pretty bad for you. The, uh, the optics on that are looking pretty gross. Now, I'm not saying I don't believe Harley, and I'm not saying that I do believe the zine boys over here, but I'm just trying to paint the picture of what's being shown to my brain right now and how it's being processed. Because really, still no evidence, really still no actual testimonials, just Harley Flanagan trying to get ahead of the story a little bit. And that's another thing that's a little incriminating looking, to come out so quickly to make sure that your side of the story gets out first, it just comes across like emotional posting and also like you're the one that wants to be seen as the victim first, you know? And again, I'm just saying that's what it seems like. I'm not saying that is what it is. Nothing here is black and white. Nothing here is a fact. It's all just trickling out post by post on the internet. And you can go over to Harley's stories, you can go over to the cro stories, you can go over to the Destroy Zine stories and go through all of these things because they're sharing everybody that is supporting them. And there's a lot of stuff going on there that doesn't really strengthen the case, but it is salacious enough to be entertaining enough to read, I guess. But I want to know the timeline of events, okay? I want to know what actually went down here. And it's hard to really tell, but the day went on. And by the time the day came to a close, Destroy Zine had their side of the story. Now, before they had their side of the story out, they said, buy our next issue to get their side of the story, which made them seem pretty bad at the time. You know what I mean? And the hardcore kids went crazy with that. They're like, oh yeah, you're coming to attack the cro and then buy our next issue for the full story. Yeah, I can see your little ploy, but here they are with the full story. They're not holding the full story back behind a paywall whatsoever you know what I mean and they're kids they're new at this they want to they want to use like the controversy to sell a thing of course controversy creates cash you want to do that that's just smart but at the time it wasn't really the best move for them to say that of course and I don't know if like all this emotional posting from either party is really the best thing to be doing right now because it is making this so messy. It is making this so muddy. And of course, nobody actually wants to call the cops <laughs> to get involved in this and to do any sort of investigation. But rumor has it that cops were called and it wasn't by the Destroy Zine people, but I'm not exactly sure on any of that either. This is all just rumor, innuendo, and hearsay, okay? But now it's time to look at the Destroy Zine side of the story. Whole day went, we only had all these emotional posts from Harley and all these stories coming out, but then this video dropped and this is the video of the altercation. Now we don't get what led up to it, we just get to see what's going on in this video. And this does not look good for the Chrome Megs guys. Now, of course, it's a little bit out of context. We don't get before the video. We don't get after the video. We just get this video. And I'm not going to let it play because it is kind of disgusting to watch. And it might go against uh, the terms of service. But I will describe what's going on here. You got this turned over merch table. All this merch on the floor, okay? You got these, like... 50, 60 year old guys as the cops ring by outside of my apartment, okay? And it looks like they're uh, they're holding down somebody. Okay, yep, yeah. uh, and then another guy comes in to help this other big guy with this somebody. This somebody that they're fighting must be a big burly guy that it needs two people to, to like bring down like this, right? Oh no, oh no, those, those, those were legs of a lady. That, 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 these, what? <laughs> That, that lady is like 120 pounds soaking wet at the max and you have these two like 200 pound guys just manhandling her. This doesn't look good for the cro camp, okay? No matter what happened, no, even if they were just like, S.A., 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 you did the thing. This doesn't look good. This is bad. This is too... Big burly dudes beating up a woman and that just does not look good, bro. And in those stories that I'm talking about, people are dissecting what's going on in this video. And apparently those two guys taking out that woman, they're part of like the, the cro crew. But just beyond this little banister, apparently there's Harley and his son or nephew. We get conflicting reports if it's a son or a nephew, doesn't really matter. But apparently they're laying the boots to somebody back here. 
So if you're looking at just this video, like this is like a bloodline beatdown, okay? This is the whole faction coming in and just stomping the boots all over people that are much smaller and less experienced, you know? Doesn't look very good. But of course Destroyzine have their entire side of the story, which I will be reading after we just go through these slides. We got an eyewitness account here saying, I personally saw them steal your shit and Harley screamed at me when I asked him to stop. And I was outside listening when Harley and the other cro dudes were plotting what to say and writing a new narrative. I heard and watched him personally saw, this is the story we're gonna use when we get asked by the cops. That's pretty awful looking. That doesn't look very good for old Harley. And now it looks like we got a voice memo, eyewitness account. I was sitting at the merch table and he came over when I was there and he talked, said it to the girl. I don't know her name, but um, the, he would, the singer was like, Oh, you should keep those legs closed. You're just pulling me in, and that alone just kind of like made me mad. And yeah, but I didn't, I didn't see the fight or anything go down, so I don't know what's that. But I just heard that comment, and that's they started, and I was like, that's kind of stupid. Whoa. Okay. So if he's uh, if he's saying that kind of stuff, I can just see why they're alleging essay there. That's pretty gross stuff. Yep, for sure. That's not good at all. Hey, another eyewitness account. Cro-Mags were the perps. As if Harley doesn't have a reputation for attacking people. There's a video of two of the Cro-Mags dudes grabbing that poor girl, which we just watched. Who couldn't have been more than 115 pounds soaking wet. I said 120 pounds soaking wet, but I, yeah, I said very similar stuff. And they started grabbing her by her head and throwing her around like a rag doll with three huge dudes and kicking one kid in the ribs in the background and that's before Harley came on stage and gave a misogynist rant degrading women calling them bitches and liars saying not to speak up against creepy men without figurative guard dog around to save them oh dude this, <laughs> Harley this is not looking good for you bro now I know anybody could just be saying things just to say things online and this is all just stuff being said online but this does not look good for Harley and the cro dudes at all. They have a suture kit because they're a big part of the DIY community and DIY shows give free medical attention to people who get hurt at them. Yeah, I think having a suture kit is not necessarily malicious when you're going to a hardcore show because of slam dancing, because of moshing, because of stage diving. You know, accidents do happen. And these guys really do seem like they're all about the scene. These guys are passionate about the scene. I think they're bringing in a suture kit uh, to take care of people, to provide medical attention to people that might get a little scrape or a bruise, you know? Everyone there that knows Harley was saying that this is just a typical day for the crow Mag show. Yeah, that sounds about right. It is one thing to instigate violence or start a fight. It's another thing to plot a script and then fake a story behind the scenes and then come to the media acting like they're the victim. See, that's what it seems like to me. Just looking on the outside, that's what it seems like. But then to have somebody that was actually there say that that's what it feels like to them as well is kind of validating in my feeling, you know? Another witness? Not only did the cro dude start the fight, after the kids broke free and came out terrified and running for their lives, then they looted their merch and stole their money and trashed what was left. Okay, yeah, that's a, that sounds pretty typical. I kind of believe Kate over here. Kate sounds like she's not telling lies. That's what actually happened, not the sob story Harley decided to pull out of thin air. These grown men just jumped and robbed these kids. They're to blame for putting anyone else who was innocent there at risk. So now with Harley's side out of the way, with these eyewitnesses out of the way, Let's see what Destroy Zine has to say. Now this is the biggest testimonial so far, so strap in, you know what I mean? Get yourself some popcorn, get yourself some pancakes, and just open your ears and listen to this. Now, these are all just like sides of the story, and just like every story, there's three sides, okay? Harley's story, Destroy Zine's story, and then somewhere in the middle, the truth. The cro offered us press passes over Instagram Messenger to come document their show at Cafe 611 in Frederick, Maryland. We happily said yes as we were fans of the band. We went with the possibility of an interview with Harley Flanagan of the cro and were very excited to meet them at first. Okay, so now it seems like Harley was the one reaching out to these guys. It doesn't seem like these guys uh, like put on their ski masks, got their suture kit and all their weapons, and were like, okay, let's let's meet up with Harley and attack them. I think, I think they were fans of the band. Everything seems to line up with what the witnesses were saying, especially when you consider the kind of guy that Harley has always been throughout history. 
This is the kind of guy that goes and stabs his former bandmates because he's not in a band with them anymore and he's super angry about it. We arrived at the show and went to the vending area. Merch is completely set up and ready to go. People start coming to check out what we have and asking us about prices and things. As a kid is purchasing a patch from our table, Harley Flanagan of the cro walks up to us and started asking us about the art of our magazine cover. He then slapped our female editor's thigh multiple times and said to her, yeah, you better close those legs, little girl. You're sucking me in. Oh, dude, that sentence was really hard to read. And you can see that. You can imagine him, like, doing that. Oh, it's so gross, dude. Now, if that's what happened, yeah, call that out. Don't just, like, let that slide. If this guy's slapping your inner thigh, you know what I mean? Yeah, say that that's a little creepy. She exclaimed anxiously that she is on the back cover of the magazine, hoping to deflect the attention to something else, in which Harley replies, damn right you are, I'll see you later tonight. Oh. Then he proceeded to say our magazine looks great and asked us to reserve him a copy as he wants to see what we're up to. We felt let down, disappointed that someone who was looked up to by so many people just felt welcome to openly say that in front of us, let alone touch a young girl. Harley's nephew, or son, as he says, then comes over to her and apologizes for Harley's actions. Oh, sorry for my old man. He's a... He's a little fuck that guy is that you don't want to get. We didn't interact with the band or any other crew after that besides to give Harley a silver Sharpie. He had started yelling at us about the Sharpie and we gave it to him in hopes he would leave us alone. Throughout hanging out at the show, Harley would stare at our photographer slash editor on multiple occasions, walking by and or standing at the door across from our table. When we spotted Harley, they would look away and try to avoid eye contact. After a while, Death Wish, the third band to play before the Cro-Mags was up, and we listened to for a bit. We were hanging in the merch room and chatting. We went to check out DRI's merch table which is off to the right. Our photographer slash editor watched the table alone. Oh no, that, that's a recipe for disaster. We were talking back and forth and checking out the shirt rack at the DRI table when we started to hear our editor slash photographer confront Harley as he was staring at her, talking to his crew, and gesturing towards her at the doorway. This was obvious as each time she would move out of Harley's sight, he would then move into sight of her. This happened a few times before initially calling him out. They didn't call him out right away, right after the thigh slap. They let the band go on and play. And like, all right, you know, the, the son or nephew apologized. You go do your thing, whatever. But then he's like creeping around like this. Of course you're gonna call that out. We quickly left the DRI table to de-escalate the situation. His nephew started threatening violence as we said, please walk away, we just want peace. We begged for peace multiple times. They were made well aware of their essay at the start of the show, and Harley explained something to the effect of, maybe your girlfriend shouldn't have her pussy out and I wouldn't be looking. Oh, dude, Harley, bro. He then proceeds to rip the other editor's mask off, and the editor is then pulled back by the members of the crew and swung at a few times. He was initially able to get out of it before a couple more hits were taken. As that occurred, Harley is in the other editor's face, pointing at him saying, I'm going to break your friend's legs and it's going to be all your fault. The singer of DRI then exclaimed from behind this table, they aren't even in a band, which Harley repeated loudly to the whole crowd. He knew they weren't in a band. They were there to interview him after he claimed to give us press passes that we never saw or received. Now their side of the story is a whole lot more detailed than Harley's side of the story. And I really don't see these guys as like literature majors that are out here like crafting a narrative, you know? But again, it's all on the internet and it's impossible to know who's right and who's wrong from this. But it's I'm just saying it looks awful for Harley right now. He screamed these things all while flipping our merch table full of glass bottles, magazines, all of our art while there were children nearby. Yeah, we saw the flip table. We saw the art all over the place. That much is corroborated fully by that video. But what isn't corroborated is how it got there. What happened just before that? It was after that the editor who was being pointed at pepper sprayed Harley in the face so that he couldn't hurt our photographer. Okay, so in Harley's account, he didn't mention any of the stuff that he did, but in the Destroy Zine's account, they're like, yeah, we pepper sprayed him, and here's exactly when it happened and why it got to that point. He also had to pepper spray Harley's nephew or son because they began to rush us from all sides. 
And as we saw in that video, yeah, they're swarming, you know? Our editor was swarmed by the merch guy, again, that's a word that I just used, who was supposedly Harley's nephew, another person, as well as Harley. He was repeatedly beaten and kicked and punched as he fell to the ground curling into a ball as he closed his eyes and covered his face. He was dizzy and delirious. We used pepper spray in self-defense, and our female editor used a taser to protect herself from assault. Tasers are legal in the state of Maryland to purchase without a permit, and are legal for use in self-defense situations. We acted in self-defense within the boundaries of the law. Now, when you're making your own statement, you don't need to say within the boundaries of the law because it's not you're not saying it to a lawyer and the lawyers aren't involved right now. You can just say we acted in self-defense because it is clear that you were acting in self-defense based on the story the way it's being told right now. Our female photographer went to save our editor, but she was grabbed by her arm by one person and another man named Don Ramirez grabbed her by the throat. Don Ramirez is a former adjunct faculty at Shepherd University and self-proclaimed former employee of the Frederick Psychiatric Unit. They twisted her arm and said they were going to break it. Harley then jumps on top of her, but she kicks him in the groin. He exclaimed, you little bitch, while holding himself and then buckling. Eventually, we were able to get free and we attempted to escape the assault. Okay, Destroy Zine is really painting a picture here, you know? Harley then grabs his double-edged dagger from the floor, which had been in his pocket. Okay, so this is where the cut comes in. Harley has the double-edged dagger. Okay. And points it at our female photographer and backs her out of the door while saying, get the fuck out of here. This happened while the other editor watched from the doorway in fear, being repeatedly punched by multiple people as the vocalist of DRI blocked him from helping her. After everyone was able to get out of the situation, Harley then takes our bag and starts stealing stuff from inside it. One thing in it, a sewing kit used for making band patches. We had come to the show excited for new patches. This kit also had floss in it, which was used for sewing patches. Harley stole the money out of our bag and everything else in it. He was seen by the show promoter's daughter and other people. Afterwards, Harley continued to smash the merchandise on the ground when a friend of ours came to pick it up for us. Harley ripped it out of their hands and he threw it into the trash outside. We had to flee the scene as we were kicked out and barred by people claiming to be security. One of these men was Don Ramirez, who posted on Facebook later admitting to his actions. He was not security, and he has been actively bragging about his choices. He can also be quoted from a Facebook post he made that the editor who was beaten to the ground begged him to get me out of here. Since then, we have been harassed online by fans of the Cro-Mags and also Don Ramirez. Harley Flanagan has made multiple posts in which he weaves a tale that changes each time. He has been inviting his fans to come after us online, and some of the Cro-Mags were even threatening to hurt or jump us. Activating your fan base and then using them as a weapon against anybody is awful, okay? Sending your fans to somebody for harassment is nothing cool, okay? All while sharing the cro song, Street Justice. They clearly wanted to hurt us, and we wanted to get away and protect ourselves. Since we've escaped, we have done plenty of research on Harley Flanagan and learned that he has stabbed multiple people, including his own former band members. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. We also discovered that he has girls in the past. We even discovered he's a proud Nazi. Had we known of his criminal past, we would have never accepted his fake press passes, which we never even saw or received. We acted in self-defense, shocked, appalled, and deeply disappointed by the cro -Mags. their vocalist Harley Flanagan, his nephew or son, and Don Ramirez who assaulted us. We encourage everyone to come forward as witnesses and share their story. Please keep your friends and family safe at shows and in the world. We love you all. Okay. Oh my god, that was a lot to get through. And of course, their story is a whole lot more detailed than the Harley Flanagan thing that came out, which is just like one little paragraph. How are you going to do one little paragraph if, if that is the entire incident? Oh my god, not looking so good. But then, the Cro-Mags responded to that post today, and I really don't want to do any more reading. They basically go on to say, We know women. We have women that work for us. Why would we attack women when we employ women? We know women. We have women in our families. We would never do such a thing. Harley is an American man that would never do anything bad like that. He is too good. He's been performing for like years or whatever, all right? He's been essayed. Everyone he knows has been essayed. He would never do such a thing. And then they close it off by comparing what happened to him 
to Harley Flanagan to the Salem witch trials. You know where they actually like tied women to posts and burned them? Yeah, yeah, he's thinking that that's him. Isn't that the most insensitive, crazy thing to say? So I can't claim to know what went on that night. I can't claim to be on one side or the other, and I can't tell you what side to believe, okay? That would be insane. All I did is I read his side of the story, their side of the story, and showed the video, and gave a little bit of my interpretation through all of that, okay? Now, it's all alleged, it's all still developing, but I gotta give you my take on this before I walk away from this. And if you have a different take, that's okay, you know what I mean, it is all very vague right now. But cro don't look very good right now, especially because of their response and how they went about it, all right? <clears throat> Saying that they're like, no women, and that that's why they would never do such a thing. They're basically just avoiding talking about any of the specifics that happened, you know? And on top of all the incriminating stuff that's going on, this is just adding to that pile. If after Harley's post, I went and I saw that these kids didn't have a zine, and that they're just putting on ski masks to go hunt down this guy because of his Nazi behavior, then I would've been like, okay, I see, that's, that's a little I'm not really on board with that. Even though he's an enemy of mine, I don't agree with violence. But that wasn't the case. That clearly wasn't the story. They didn't even know about his past. They didn't even know about his other affiliations. They didn't even know about him stabbing his former bandmates. They just wanted to go talk to the cro -Mags. But I'm just gonna leave it there for now. I've been talking for way too long. If anything develops, of course, I'll be here to talk about it. I hope everybody's okay. Please stay safe. Okay, see you later.